Hey YouTube, Kyle here again. I'm coming to you again with uh, another product review. Um, today, instead of reviewing a shield, I'm actually going to review the, the platform itself. Um, now we all know Arduino, we all love Arduino, and this is my genuine Arduino Uno. It's a fantastic platform. We can do pretty much everything we want with this. But sometimes when you want to build your final you know, your kit, your your project, you this may not be exactly what you need. It may be a little on the old bulky side. Um most of you that have been following me will know that I'm building my own quadcopter multi rotor project. Um and you know the the best thing to do with those is to reduce as much weight as possible. So I mean this thing doesn't weigh a lot but you know it can be a bit bulky. Especially when there are other products out there which are the same um, and can be a bit smaller. Now I just want to clear something up because um, there's been a lot of speculation over people saying these are Arduino copycats. Um, well the Arduino platform is open source which means you could go out and build your own. There's, there's nothing to say that you are ripping off Arduino unless of course you are creating your own and calling it Arduino. Um, so I'm going to review a couple of Funduino projects today, products even, um, and these have been given to me by icstation.com. Now you may remember them from a previous review I did of the Funduino joystick shield. So this is a shield that I reviewed earlier before. Um, I love this, this, you know, this is brilliant little input-output device, and I've added a few extra bits to add wireless communication and some LEDs. But anyways, I'll come back to that later. So, as I said, this is my genuine Arduino Uno, and um, I'm just going to review some Funduino products. But they're not going to be this Uno shape. So again, I was saying that maybe this Uno may be a bit on the old bulky side. Um, maybe everyone's heard of the Nano. Well, this is my Arduino Nano. Now, I knew it was small, but I wasn't anticipating being this small. I mean, in the palm of your hand, it is, it's is—it's—it's tiny. I mean, up against the Arduino Uno itself, it's, you know, it, it's smaller than the width of the board itself, and just as wide as about the, just maybe just a bit wider than the USB socket. I mean, man, these things are tiny, and they've been able to achieve this because the board is double-sided. Okay, so this is the Arduino, nope, sorry, Funduino Nano Revision 3. Uh, the significance of the Revision 3 means it has an 80 mega 328 chip on it, which gives you 32k of memory as opposed to 16, and it is pretty much the same, all in all, as this Uno. Of course, the fact it's missing the headers, but you can either attach things to pins directly, or, you know, you could solder some headers to a piece of perf board and just slot that right in there. Right, so uh, just to give you a brief overview of the specifications of the Nano. This thing's amazing. Right. So it's got the, eight, as I mentioned earlier, the 80 mega 328. It has an operational logic vol voltage of 5 volts, same as the UNO. Um, an input voltage, right, so just like the UNO, you can either power it off of the USB, 7 to 12 volts, or at this bottom pin here, I don't know if the camera will, will focus, but anyway, that bottom pin there is V in. You can attach 7 to 12 volts into the, uh, sorry, 6 between 6 and 20 volts as a limit. Um, there is a voltage regulator on the bottom here, but with the, the slight difference between the Nano and the Uno is if you're powering the board through the external V-in port, you can no longer use the USB port in the same project. So to extract serial data, you would need to actually physically attach the TX and RX pins up the top here. But you know, for, for for my purposes, for example, I'm not always going to have, I'm going to have, you know, the LiPo battery power coming in here, and I'm not really going to make use of this unless I'm powering the device to program it. Right, so the Nano has 
14 I.O. pins, six of which produce PWM pulse width modulation, and eight analog pins, very similar to the Arduino Uno. And you've got the reset button here at the top. Okay, and it runs 16 megahertz clock speed. Now, I just, I, I really, I cannot get over just how small the Nano is. I mean, the Na the Uno itself is not huge. And the Nano is even smaller. I uh, just like to point out, okay, also, so yes, yeah, so you've got the reset button here. You've got your standard LED here, which is attached to pin D13. You've got a power LED here. And then you've got the TX and RX LEDs. Right. Um, okay, so, like I said, this came through the post from icstation.com. Took a couple of weeks to turn up from the point where they dispatched it. And, you know, I was very I was very pleased with it. It came with a, a micro USB cable as well. It came with the boot ROM already loaded on it, so you haven't got to go flash it or anything like that. It's got everything in. You can just plug it into the IDE. Um, oh, that's the other thing. You do need to install the FTDI driver for your operating system. So, whereas the Uno and the Mega, which have support built into them already through the IDE, the the Nano will require the FTDI driver for it before it will appear as a serial com device. Just bear that in mind. So that's FTDI. And if you search that in Google, FTDI driver Arduino Nano, it will take you exactly where you need to go. Just install the one for your operating system. Uh, you may need to restart your system, but then you're away. So, like I said, this came with the, the, the relative firmware pre-installed on it. Um, the guys also shipped it with, you know, the standard Blink sketch on there. So you power it up and you know it's working because this bottom LED here will just start blinking one, two, three, you know, once a second. I mean, yeah, I've, I've been able to put, because these have exactly the same memory, I've been able to put my entire quadcopter sketch, which is about 25k, which is on here, straight onto here, and I've reduced my weight and my overall project size. It's fantastic. I mean, what this has allowed me to do is I've got a piece of uh, prototyping board, which I can mount my Uno on here like that. And then I've got my separate IMU chip, which I'll stick here, and my wireless chip here. Because originally I've got a shield that sits across the top of this board, with everything I've just mentioned on top. So that's, you know, two boards of Uno size to get this working. Well, now that I've got this, I can have one board the same size as the Uno with everything I need on it. Just makes everything feel a lot neater, a lot more compact. Right. Well, this wasn't the only thing that icstation.com sent me. They also went the complete other end of the scale. And, ta-da! They sent me this Funduino Mega. Now, this is their Funduino version of the Arduino Mega 2560. Now, this is insane. This is the creme de la creme of Arduino boards currently. You know, you will never run out of I.O. pins on this board. Um, this also is the only board currently to have multiple serial devices. Um, so, you know, in your sketch, you would do serial.begin, and then you'd give it a baud rate of, I don't know, say 9600. With the Mega, you would say serial1.begin, or serial2.begin, and even serial3.begin. And you'd reference them individually like that. Uh, to give you an idea of the Mega... I mean, this thing's insane. I mean, the build quality on this is, is perfect. I mean, it's exactly what you want it to be. There's no dodgy links, no dodgy solder connections. It's, you know, it's finished really nicely and just works. So to give you some specifications of this board, so similarly to all the other Arduino projects, it's got a logic voltage level of 5 volts. Um, again, the same input-output voltage limits. There are a grand total of 54 input-output pins, uh, 15 of which provide PWM output, which is these ones along here, clearly labelled PWM. All of your communication devices are here. Um, you 
get a broken out SDA and SCL, as your I squared C connection port pins. Um, you see this now on the Arduino Uno Rev3, um, but it's more prominent now uh, and is a lot easier. It used to come hanging off of analog pin 4 and 5, um, but now they've actually given them their own dedicated label pins, which is very nice. Okay, um, of EEPROM memory, this has got 4 kilobytes of EEPROM memory, whereas the Nano and the Uno only have 512 bytes. So, you know, if you're going to be writing in and out of memory, which, which you can do with certain sketches, um, you know, of course, this will have more memory. Right. Uh, again, this has a clock speed of 16 megahertz, but has a combined total memory flash memory of 256k, whereas these are only 32k. Um, again, this came with the software bootloader put on it, and also the uh, Blink sketch preloaded, so you know it was working once it's connected to power. So you've got your reset button here, very familiar to everyone. Uh, power LED up here. Um, this is your standard D13 pin attached LED and your standard TX-RX pins um, and of course you've got your, your power system here so you can with this one you can attach external power and the external USB connection to read and write out of the serial ports as well as powering it externally whereas as I mentioned before with the UNO you have to choose one or t'other um, right I will just bring up my web browser and show you where and how much these these things cost. Again, this also came with a USB cable. Um, again, two weeks to ship and came very well packaged, very well protected. Um, no bent pins on anything during the post and shippage. Um, yeah. So, just bear with me a second and I'll bring up my web browser and I'll show you the website where you can order these from. I would recommend these. I mean, at, they are a fraction of the cost of the Arduino items themselves. I know that, for example, in your local Maplin store, the Arduino Mega, same version as this, is about 44 British pounds. Um, and this is considerably not that. So bear with me a second while I bring up my web browser. So here we have the icstation.com website. And this is the Funduino Nano that I showed you and spoke to you about earlier. This is currently uh, £12.98, $12 this is US currency, um, but this equates to £7.76 in British sterling. And the Mega, this is the Funduino Mega that I was also showing you, at £20.31, which works out at £12.74 um, with Great British Pounds. So uh, these are certainly well worth looking at because they work just the same as the Arduino brand boards. They are, you know, all the functionality is the same, the build quality is the same. The only difference is the price. So like I said earlier, this particular board is roughly 44 British pounds in your local Maplin store. So this is certainly worth considering when looking at the costs of your projects um, because, you know, we all like to save money and these work perfectly I would really recommend them uh, thank you for watching my video and if I can help you in any way with any questions feel free to leave a comment in the box take care bye bye